You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, episode 34, Aromatherapy and Menopause, part two. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause and menopause related. Stay tuned as naturopath Jennifer Harrington explains how to use natural therapies to transform your health and happiness. Hello ladies, welcome back. Today we have part two of our aromatherapy special and with me I have V. O'Brien. V is a nutritional therapist, a health and life coach, and an essential oils educator. She works with women over 35 to help them feel calm, healthy, and happy. Now, I'm personally really, really excited to have her on today because in my perimenopausal, menopausal journey, the first thing that reared its ugly head was anxiety. And the thought of feeling calm really floats my boat. So V, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, absolute pleasure. I'm delighted to be here. Thank Ah. you for inviting me. Oh, look, you're a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure my listeners are going to get so much out of our talk today. How did you get into aromatherapies? Um, I I was invited to learn about um, essential oils uh, by another nutritional therapist, actually. Um, and I went along to a class and I, with a completely open mind, um, but really just thinking that essential oils were for, um, sort of nice massages or to put on the pillow to go to sleep. Um, I had no idea how powerful essential oils are and can be. Um, and I learned about the oils and I, and I purchased some and I just planned to use them with myself and my family. And after a few months of using them and seeing these amazing results and starting to just test them with my clients as well, um, I realized that actually there was so much more to this and I started to research and the more I researched and the more I learned, the more I um, realized that these were incredibly powerful for women. And with my target, you know, my, my audience, uh, my clients, who are women, as you said, sort of 35 plus um, heading into perimenopause and menopause and being able to incorporate those with the nutrition um, um, and the supplementation was just incredibly powerful and people just fall in love with them so yeah that's how I kind of moved into the essential oil world fantastic well I I actually get it as a medical herbalist we start we we quite often think about the constituents of the herbs and quite often essential oils are in the herbs that I Mm. use medicinally Um, but I don't um, so I use them more as a herb rather than an oil so I mm. for me it's it's not a big jump it's not a big difference um, and they're so easy to use but what I brought you on here for today was to actually talk about when you would use them and how we can use them and I jumped a bit I was talking at the beginning about my transition and how anxiety and mm. mood can be a part of this perimenopausal journey what oils would you use in those scenarios and how could how could they help the wonderful thing about oils is that they uh, each one has its own unique fingerprint its own unique um, chemistry and uh, one oil can have lots and lots of different uses so whilst it can be calming It can also be uplifting. Uh, And the other thing to remember with oils is that they also work with your chemistry. So 
somebody can have a really profound effect with one oil over another and somebody else vice versa. So with something like um, mood swings, for example, it depends on what obviously is, is triggering the mood swings. And as we both know in the work that we do, there's many causes of mood swings. Um, but if it's hormonal mood swings, if it's perimenopausal or, um, you know, it's, it's to do with um, the, the, the hormones, then um, we could be looking at things like lavender can be incredibly calming. It calms the mind and the body. It reduces cortisol levels. It eases anxiety. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just incredibly calming. It's, we call it the calming oil. And it just, you know, people have known about lavender for sleep for a long time. And lots of people use lavender sprayed on their pillow or whatever but actually it's a really fantastic oil for helping with um, mood swings another oil that is brilliant um, is clary clary sage clary sage is probably my number one hormone balancing oil um, but it works on moods too so again it can bring us into balance and then um there's a, a blend that I use called, called Balance, um, and it's the grounding blend. Um, and it's fantastic used on the soles of the feet. That's my favorite place to put it. And it's got oils like spruce. Can I stop you for a minute, V? Why, mm. why is the soles of your feet your favorite place to use it? Because the soles of the feet have large pores. If you, when I say the soles, I'm talking about the arch area, so the soft part of your foot. Um, and we've got large pores, uh, uh, pores there. So the oil goes in through the, um, the skin and into the bloodstream and starts circulating really quickly. So I think it's a lovely thing to do as a daily ritual to put balance on first thing in the morning, just to bring yourself into balance and ground you first thing. Um, so that's one of my favorite uses and it's got, it's a very woody smell. It's got, um, things like hoewood and spruce and frankincense in it. And then it's got some, um, some unusual, um, flower oils like blue tansy and blue chamomile. So it's a really, um, it's a really beautiful one. There's lots of different oils for, um, mood swings. When you're talking about low mood, we're probably going to be looking at more of the uplifting oils. Um, so things like citrus oils are probably the most uplifting of the oils, bergamot, um, wild orange, uh, lemon, lime, those kinds of oils. And then again, there's blends. There's one called cheer, which is, um, probably my favorite blend of all. Um, and it's got citrus oils and it's got spicy oils. It's got, um, things like, um, uh, clove in it um and it's an absolutely beautiful smell it's um i love the name sounds Chia. amazing <laughs> yeah it is it's really really beautiful so yeah there's just so many different ones but um it's about finding what what works for you personally and i really believe that when you smell oils if you're drawn to them they're the ones that you need at that time so we spoke about using them on the soles of the feet. How else would you recommend women try these oils? Mm. Well, one of the great places of using oils is um, on the back of the neck. Um, we can also apply them to the, um, the wrists because we, it's our pulse point, so it's very easy. It's very close to the vein, so they, they, they go in through the skin and into the bloodstream really quickly. If you're suffering from PMS-type symptoms, um, then actually applying them to your lower belly as close to your um, reproductive organs as possible is another fantastic place to put them. And then, of course, inhaling them. So either inhaling them from your hands or in a cold water diffuser um, it was a really good way to use the oils as well. And then I, the third way is, sorry, um, the, the third way is ingesting. And um, certain oils you can ingest. I will caveat that you have to be absolutely sure that you're using a brand that is 100% certified pure. Um, otherwise, you should never ingest. 
and probably under the guidance of a, a practitioner who knows what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, with putting the aromatherapies on the belly, there's an ancient traditional Chinese medicine called a ginger poultice, where you mm. apply ginger and heat over the reproductive area. Mm. So if you're putting oils, if you're rubbing oils into your lower belly, could mm. you also perhaps put like a, a water bottle or some sort of like heat? A heat pack? Yeah, absolutely. You can do as well. Yes, definitely. That's something that... Um, we recommend if um, people are suffering yeah. yeah and you can do the same with you can do the same with, um, over the liver as well if you want to do a liver pack um so yes yes fantastic did you have any other ideas around moods or should we move on to headaches uh let's move on to headaches yes okay so headaches are another fairly common symptom for women transitioning into menopause and from aromatherapy point of view, what oils would you be considering? Well, this one is um, is one close to my heart because I have um, suffered from headaches, um, and I have I've always been prone to headaches. Um, and when I was younger, I never really correlated them to hormones. But as I've got older and I'm in perimenopause, I now realise because obviously I'm much more aware of my cycles, um, that when I have had headaches, they have been, um, to do with my, to do with my hormones and my cycle. Um, and there's different oils and they do different things. And again, it's about finding the one that works for you. The one that we always go to first is peppermint oil because it has, it's very good for tension headaches. Um, and what it can do is really just relieve that that feeling of tightness across the forehead and the temples. If you've had headaches um, like that, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, so it has yes, very, I do. Yes, <laughs> a fellow headache sufferer over here. Mm. Yes, and it it just eases that. It just takes the edge off the headache, and it can completely get rid of it too. Um, it's very cooling as well. Peppermint is a really cooling oil, so it feels lovely. Um, it's it's one that you know can be used for cooling for lots of different reasons. But when you've got a headache, often you just want to relieve that sort of throbbing, and it's brilliant for that. The ones that I find most helpful when I am having, when in the past I've had a um, a hormonal type headache, which as we know, we know when we've got them because nothing touches them. You know, paracetamol is a pointless thing to take when you've got that kind of headache. The ones that I find really helpful are things like frankincense. Um, the frankincense that I use is it has four different species of frankincense um, to get the a really broad chemical profile. Uh, and it's um, what I do with that is I put it a drop under my tongue and I rub um, some on the roof of my mouth because it uh, crosses the blood brain barrier. So it actually goes through the mouth and, and can, can access the brain. Um, another one is quite a new oil um, for me. Um, I say new, I've been using it for about a year now because it's been uh, uh, available in the UK um, from the the, co the company that I buy oils from um, for about a year, and it's Copaiba. Copaiba is an incredible oil um, for so many uses, but one of its benefits is that it, it works on the a part of the nervous system and it calms the nervous system. So that can be really helpful for people with headaches as well. I've Some never heard of it. So Copaiba is... Um, very similar in chemical structure to cannabis or CBD. Okay. Um, it works on the um, endocannabinoid system, but the difference with it is that it doesn't, it works on the CB2 receptors instead of the CB1. So the CB1 receptors have a psychoactive um, effect and the CB2 don't. So it's completely legal, um, incredibly powerful, uh, and it's got many, many uses. It's very calming. 
So you talking about anxiety earlier, Kapiba is one of my favorites for anxiety. How does it go uh, for pain? Because when I think about things that also go down that receptor, it can be things mm, like pain, anxiety, stress. Mm, mm. It, 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 that, that's exactly what it's, um, uh, what it's used for. Um, there's so many different um, testimonials of people using Kapiba for all sorts of things. Ooh, I'm going to have to get the spelling for that so we can put it in the show notes, but also so I can go and get some. It's C-O-P-A-I-B-A. Thank you. Yes, it's an, it's an amazing oil. Um, and it's a, a lot more affordable than um, cannabis oil and also it's legal. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful alternative for people who are wanting, you know, to use something of that type of, um, you know, that type of oil and from a reputable source and from a reputable source exactly it's 100 percent pure therapeutic grade which is super important with oils people don't realize when they're putting oils on their skin they're still taking them internally when they inhale them they're taking them internally we, we always think i think as humans that if we're unless we're putting it in our mouth it's not internal but of course we know that anything we put on our skin is going to um, go through the skin into the bloodstream so especially oils because obviously they are lipid so they just slip through very easily yeah and that's why you pick the certain locations like the wrists and the soles of the feet because mm-hmm. that's when you're going to get the highest absorption you're going to get it into the bloodstream as as quick as possible yeah and if you want a systemic effect then with the oils that are you know that you're not that don't cause sensitivity issues which most of them don't um if they're pure you um you want to put them on neat but if you are um wanting to actually treat an area of the body say you've got pain um, and you want to treat an area then you want to dilute it with a little bit of carrier oil because it actually holds the essential oil on that area for longer so that it can work on the cells in that area that's a good point um, yeah so people think when they dilute, oh, if I dilute it, I'm diluting the effects. Not at all. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve. So say headaches with peppermint, I would always suggest a little bit of dilution um, with something like fractionated coconut oil, which is a liquid coconut oil, because you can it locks it onto the head, you, you know, because you don't want to have the systemic effect. You're just wanting to get rid of the headache. Absolutely. <laughs> and as quick as possible. Where's that peppermint oil? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we were also going to talk about brain fog today. Mm. Very common perimenopause, menopause sign. Um, just that issues with memory, with word recall, that kind of thing. What, what Are there any oils that can help with that? Mm, there are, yes, absolutely. The main oils for um, concentration and um, focus and mental clarity um, are the mint oils. So there's numerous oils in the mint family. And my two favorites for brain fog are either, again, peppermint. Um, It's very good at um, focusing the mind and increasing alertness. So it's fantastic if you're feeling tired. Um, but if you're trying to to work um, or, you know, kids and teenagers wanting to study and you know, do their homework or studying for exams or whatever it might be, peppermint is fantastic. Um, for women going through menopause and, you know, suffering from that brain fog, peppermint is really good. Rosemary is a really good one as well. Rosemary is probably the number one for cognitive function. There's actually studies with rosemary being used for um, um, to help um, people with dementia. So it is a it's a very powerful brain oil. Um, and how do you the use herb. we use yes it exactly as a, as a herb as well for those same reasons. Yeah, and rosemary. Um, how you would use it? You would either um, diffuse it or apply it topically. Um, onto the sort of head area but again um, diluted so they're the two um, sort of for for brain fog but what I find really helpful as well is to use citrus oils for the uplifting element as well because the combination of mint and citrus is a really good um, partnership 
So something like because when I go back to my mm. youth days, I remember having a, a citrus blend. I remember the lime. I really loved the smell of the lime aromatherapy. I just remember burning that when I was studying. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned mm. citrus oils. Mm. Yeah, they work really well with mint. So peppermint and wild orange is a lovely combination or peppermint and, um, and lime, as you say, lemon, any of those sorts of oils. Bergamot's also really good as well. It's quite an unusual one. Um, so yeah, very, very helpful for brain fog. And, you know, I think women really, su- you know, some women really suffer with that. And it's, it can be really, um, I want to say not debilitating, but it can be really frustrating, I think, when you know that it's your hormones that are causing this sort of fog and you can't see the wood for the trees. Um, and having something that you can just, a bottle that you can open and have an inhale of, and it can help to clear it, I think is just fantastic. And they're such small bottles. You could easily keep one in your handbag and take it everywhere with you. So if you're out shopping and you forgot where you parked the car, you can get it out mm. a little with a couple of deep mm. breaths. Okay, where mm. is it? <laughs> we have little um, key rings. They're like um, key ring uh, zip little zipper things and they've got tiny little one dram bottles in so you can fill up a one dram bottle and so you can just have your sort of top eight oils with you all the time um so that's a lovely way to be able to take your oils with you and not have to sort of have too many in your handbag although i have to say i probably don't stick to just those (laughs) (laughs) no but it's good to have a couple of emergency go-to ones and it's Mm -hmm. just like a little key ring thing Mm. Yeah, it's like a little zipper and it, it's got little um, uh, elastic sort of, um, slots and you just slot the little bottles in and then zip it up and it's attached to your keys. keys. Nice. Yeah. We should have spoke Maybe before it. Christmas. That would have been an ideal Christmas yeah. present. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's just one other oil I should mention. Um, it's a blend and it's called Clary Calm and it's, it's known as the women's monthly blend and it is um it's a blend it's been put together to help women to be able to use something that kind of covers a lot of symptoms um, of perimenopause um, and menopause and it's got in it thing uh, oils like lavender roman chamomile clary sage um, and vitex um, amongst others and it's been blended so that it no matter what is going on it can help with mood swings with easing cramps with low low moods Um, it can help with headaches um, etc so that's a really good one to know about is this, this this it's in a roller bottle so it's a little bit different to the others it's really handbag friendly and it's sounds I like it be covers so many bases as well it's like you're if you could only take one that sounds like it would be the one to take that would be the one absolutely yeah I have it with me all the time and I use it every day um, and I have found that it so because I'm in perimenopause obviously my um, my cycle is I say obviously not for everybody but for me the first signs I had that I was in perimenopause was that my cycle started to become irregular and I'd always been bang on 28 days and suddenly it was going a bit crazy and I was like 23 days and then 32 and I was like oh I don't like this um and I started to use it and uh I I did I did other things as well but the clary calm has been very very um powerful and I've now got my um cycle back to pretty much not quite 28 days it's 27 but you know every month it's 27 which I think is pretty good um so yeah it's been very very helpful to me well thank you so much for mentioning that because I'm sure that's going to be very very useful for many women listening today look thank you so much for your time this has been such a, a wealth of knowledge so if 
there is anyone out there listening who has loved what you've said and wants to get in contact with you, how can mm-hmm. they? So um, my, uh, I go under the name V Vital because um, my, yeah, my name is V. <laughs> so it's V V I T A L dot com is my website. Um, you can find me on Facebook under V Vital. It's V Vital One, and I'm on Instagram V Vital Health. So um, yeah, if anybody wants to get in contact, anyone has any questions, wants to know more about the oils and how they might be able to use them, then please do get in contact. I'd love to help. Wow. Well, thank you so much. But before we go, I wanted to remind the listeners that this was part two of a series on aromatherapies. So if you've listened today and you haven't listened to the first one, it doesn't matter which order you listen to them in. But in the first episode, um, I have a special guest, Mary O'Brien with me. Sorry, Mary Nash. And she goes through hot flushes, sleep disturbances and libido. So they're two very, very different conversations. So feel free to go back and listen to last week's episode if you've missed it. But V, thank you so much for your time today. I have really, really appreciated it. And I'm sure you'll have a whole lot of women reach out to you and go, hold on, what was this, Clary Calm? Where, where do we get it? What's going on? So ladies, if you are interested, feel free to contact V and I'm sure she will point you in the right direction. Until next week, bye. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibilities for statements made by guests.